Hey everyone, it's Neon Polygons, and today I wanted to do a quick video on a very rare and I would say not really known officially licensed Sega Dreamcast accessory, and that is the Sega Casio portable LCD TV, which was only available via the Dreampoint Bank system in Japan. Now, what this was, the Dreampoint Bank system, was a reward system for people who purchase a lot of Dreamcast games, people who were Sega loyalists, as you could say. And um, over time, if you accumulated uh, the highest amount, which was 10,000 points, you could obtain this prize, which was essentially a Casio LCD portable TV, which you can attach to the Dreamcast. Now, this is like technology from the year 2000, so it's not exactly the best, but it is quite impressive. And I want to kind of show some of the details here. Uh, this is the box that which it comes in. And I want to kind of show you exactly uh, all the paperwork that first came with it, because you'll see that it says uh, JY10 Casio. Now, basically, these were TVs that were essentially this model, the Casio JY10. But uh, Sega had basically worked at a deal with Casio in which um, they would, in, a sense, in essence, white label the TVs themselves, the uh, JY10 TVs, to be white labeled as an official Dreamcast product. So the only paperwork or the only, I guess, aside from the, the box packaging itself, the only thing that kind of really tells you that this is an official Dreamcast licensed product is actually this load sheet here, which came with the unit and essentially shows you how to hook up the Dreamcast to the portable TV, which the way how it works is you plug in your Dreamcast uh, into you know the outlet and the AV cables that would come out of the Sega Dreamcast, you would attach it to the corresponding AV input cable of the Casio LCD TV, and then you would attach it via um, a uh, mini jack right into the TV itself. So um, long story short, you can't really use anything but AV into the TV um, from the Dreamcast. So you can't use VGA, you can't use S-Video, um, you can't even use RF switch. The only thing that you could do is attach it via uh, AV signal and which kind of makes it a little bit unfortunate is that I, this, you know the quality of the screen isn't exactly fantastic. Um, so let me show you a little bit of the details here. Um, so here's what it comes with. It comes with this right here, this AV cable. So um, this in essence would attach into these adapters, uh, which you would take, let me show you really fast. Get this out. Right, you would attach into um, your Dreamcast AV, you would attach it into one end and then you would attach these connector, connectors into the other end and then attach uh, this uh, plug into the Casio LCD TV. So not really a lot of uh, much to it. Essentially, it's like, look, it comes with these two, um, the connectors between the Dreamcast and the, T and the AV cables and then the AV cable attaches into the portable screen itself. Um, the only other thing that came with this unit is the carry-on strap. So, you know, this is what essentially makes it portable. Um, why is it portable? Well, pull this one out here to kind of give you guys a look. Um, it's portable because it can be powered by four AAA batteries. And um, I just took out the cover here just to kind of show you guys. And the screen, when I say it's small, it is very small. Um, I'm not even talking uh, in terms of a diagonal, maybe like an inch and a half. Uh, and this is a TFT dot matrix screen. So it's not exactly like, you know, stellar quality, you know, you'll get a lot of ghosting on it, but for its size, for the year it came out with, you know, it's not bad. 
Now, um, as you can kind of see here, this is the only inclination that this is an official Sega Dreamcast product. Now, this isn't a sticker. Uh, a lot of people think they, uh, if you look up the JY10 model, uh, where the Dreamcast logo is would basically be a big Casio JY10 uh, model number. Uh, and a lot of people think that what um, Casio did was just stick on a Sega Dreamcast sticker on it, but it is not. It is actually a, um, I don't even know how to kind of describe it, but it is actually like an imprinted design onto the unit itself. Uh, it is a JY10 model, but uh, as I mentioned, this is an official Sega Dreamcast accessory. And so what they did was they more or less kind of put the design or printed that design onto the rubber holdings uh, of the unit. Um, so kind of show you some of the features here. Uh, it has a antenna. Now, obviously this is not gonna work anymore since there's no more um, uh, over the air antenna signal for these types of antennas. And on the side, just to show you also the details here, uh, you get to choose from VHF or UHF um, signal. Uh, you can power this via a DC uh, AC adapter. And on the other side, this is, let me just focus a little bit. This is where uh, underneath this little tab here, where it says audio video, you would lift that up and that's where you attach the AV cables that came with it. Um, it's pretty standard fare. It comes with its own TV tuner. Uh, you know, there's a just, you know, uh, uh, tuners over here where, or um, modals over here where you can adjust the volume and the brightness. Uh, but there isn't really much more to it. Uh, there's a little stand here. So let me kind of show you guys. So uh, once you pop this out, you can use it and watch TV as you see right there. And you would power it on by just simply pressing the power button on the top. Um, I tried this a few times. Honestly, the battery, uh, battery life on this is actually pretty damn good. Uh, uh, you know, I would probably say like you could get a good, for what it is, you can get a good, you know, four hours off of the screen, off four AAA batteries. And that's pretty impressive considering for the time in, t in the year 2000 uh, that this technology was available that you could kind of get this done. Now, um, it is a very rare item. Like I said, the only way to have gotten this is you had to have reached the maximum number of points available uh, in the Dream Point Bank system in Japan, which was 10,000 units or 10,000 points. And a lot of people, you know, were just not able to obtain this. So it's kind of a very rare item uh, for all you Sega Dreamcast collectors out there. Uh, but do I think it's worth it? I think from a historical piece, it totally is because it is one of the more unique add-ons for the Dreamcast. But uh, in my opinion, the, the high price that you'll end up paying for this is maybe may not worth it. You know, typically you'll see these for going on secondary markets, if ever you get a chance to see them for around uh, three to four hundred dollars, and they may not even be in good condition to be honest. Um, luckily, my unit was in great condition. You know, the sound works great, the video works great. Um, I can share a TikTok to um, me had filming using this screen, you know, a while back, and that, you know, maybe that should give you guys a good idea of like what it kind of looks like. Um, uh, but it's not really functional. I mean, honest, to be honest, it's like, look, if you want to play your Dreamcast on this, uh, you still have to plug in the Dreamcast. It's not like, you know, you, this is gonna, gonna be a completely portable unit with the Dreamcast. No, you still have to plug in and power on your Dreamcast, and then you still, have, and then you would plug it into the screen. And, you know, granted while, you know, that's one less plug or was one less thing you have to worry about, there is quite a bit of setup that I showed you in terms of like attaching your Dreamcast to this. And is it really worth it? It's it's really just like a novelty factor to just be playing your Dreamcast on a one and a, and a half inch diagonal screen. Um, but it is pretty cool. You know, I, I guess if some of you just want to like see the experience, you could always purchase the JY10 model straight up and that's not going to cost you three to four hundred dollars. You can probably find one of those for 
uh, 50 bucks actually brand new in box. So, um, you know, take it or leave it in terms of like how you feel. And in terms of the other, um, I guess, paperwork, they were, they weren't Sega branded, it was, you know, for Casio for really their customer support or at the time, uh, their support in terms of like and troubleshooting for the screen. Uh, but uh, it is a cool piece of Sega Dreamcast history. It is a cool, you know, very rare. It's like to, you know, remind people a very rarely and, you know, you know, seldomly seen accessory for the Sega Dreamcast. And again, there is a lot of misconceptions that it is a sticker over the JY10. It is not. It is the, it's actually put into design and the JY10, if you can kind of see me kind of shine it in this light in this way, the JY10 is actually part of that black labeling. Uh, so think about it as um, it's the bottom layer of this logo, that uh, the Sega Dreamcast logo. Well, anyways, uh, I just want to show this off just to kind of give you guys a you know a glimpse on terms of you know what this unit looks like, anything to look out for if you're trying to obtain it, and if it's worth it or not. You know, I, again, I think showing this, uh, I want to just provide more footage of this uh, on YouTube. There's not a lot of people out there who, again, who are aware of this. In fact, when I purchased it, there wasn't really information at all. So hopefully this gives people an idea of what to expect when trying to pursue one of these units. Um, but as for me, uh, you know, it really doesn't serve much of a purpose. I don't really use it as a TV at all. So it's really just more of a, you know, display piece than anything. Well, um, that's all on the Sega Dreamcast Casio Portable LCD JY10 TV, only available via the Dream uh, Point Bank system if you had attained 10,000 points. Um, but let me know your thoughts on what you think about this screen. Uh, I'll put some footage in terms of like what it looks like being used. Uh, but other than that, um, I wanna thank you all again for watching and catch you all again soon.